What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC 2023 video. So, I'm gonna cut straight to the chase. Uh, Joe UX9 just won the uh, Victory Road April Challenge with a pretty interesting team. So, this is actually a team that sort of originates um, from 45 Mice and also Santino Tarquinio. Uh, and these players are phenomenal, uh, obviously, but uh, it's a really interesting team that Joe ended up piloting. Uh, but before we get into that, if you guys enjoy this video at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content. That's my comment question of the day, which is, what is your favorite sun abuser? Anyways, let's get into it. So, uh, what I want to use this video to do is, uh, this tournament is a pretty large tournament. I ended up skipping it because I had a baptism to go to, uh, my cousins, uh, but... Uh, it's a pretty large tournament a lot of people competed in it a lot of uh big players uh and we can use it as sort of a measuring stick to gauge what is going to be popping up at portland regionals as well as uh hartford and possibly fresno yeah let's go ahead and get right into it all right so let's talk about joe's team so joe's team is this team right here except joe did make some adjustments i believe the oracle actually had a fissure on it i'm not sure if he was running a jack pack uh, but it's based off of this uh, sun archetype. We see uh, Torkoal Overheat helping Hand Yan protect. Uh, we have Choice Specs Fluttermane, Chen Pao with Focus Sash, uh, Ice Spinner, Sucker Punch, Taunt Protect. And most importantly, like we already know, we already know what all these things do. You know, Terra Fire King Gambit with Terra Blast, Great Tusk with Headlong Rush and Choice Scarf. It's the Jump Pluff that we need to take a look at. So why is Jump Pluff um, on this team? And why is it actually kind of a useful Pokemon? So in previous iterations of Sun, the Tailwind user would be Talonflame. Now, Talonflame, as good of a Pokemon as it is, as great of the tools as it has, you know, with priority Tailwind, uh, access to Will-O-Wisp, uh, a very strong Brave Bird, and just like the final move can be whatever you want. You could even run like uh, Taunt or... Taunt was more popular, but we did see some Quick Guard at some points. But yeah, uh, as, as good as Talonflame can be, it is kind of an underwhelming Pokemon with some pretty low stats across the board. And you can say the same uh, about Jumpluff, but Jumpluff is actually more inclined to be bulky than Talonflame. You can see Jumpluff has 75 HP, 70 defense, 95 special defense with 110 speed, where Talonflame has 78 HP with uh, 71 defense and uh, 69 special defense. Jumpluff is able to be um, somewhat bulkier due to the moveset that it's going to run. It won't want to invest like at all into attack or anything. And Leaf Storm is still a pretty strong move that matches up a lot better into the metagame. So... Jumpluff, uh, reason it tends to run this moveset, uh, Leaf Storm, Encore, Tailwind, not Tailwind, not Tail Whip, uh, Tailwind, and what was the last move? Was it, it was, uh, Sleep Powder. I forgot about Sleep Powder entirely for some reason. Um, it, it usually runs like this moveset because of how disruptive it can be. At 110 base speed, you're gonna go ahead and hit Timid 162, that's 178 times 2, what is that? That is 300 and... 59 349 359 i don't know i don't want to do math right now i'm stupid uh but yeah so it's it's a pretty large number compared to the likes of like iron bundle at plus one because of uh quark drive you can actually see that iron bundle will hit 206 times 1.5 you're in the low 300s there you're at what 309 uh which is notably slower than jump fluff where jump fluff will be able to immediately threaten out iron bundle with uh, the use of Leaf Storm, which hits it for super effective damage. It'll have to burn a Terra. And if it were like the Focus Sash set, like you don't really care, not Focus Band, <laughs> Focus Sash set, you don't really care anyways. You're gonna outspeed it every time. But uh, because it tends to run the booster energy, that actually means that Iron Bundle isn't gonna be able to take um, any one hit from a super strong special attacker like Jump Off, especially a super effective stab hit. So like I said, while it does have like really low offenses and wants to be more of a support Pokemon, having Leaf Storm to threaten super effective damage against Pokemon like Iron Bundle uh, and even Great Tusk, which isn't the best on the special defensive side either, is actually going to be really useful. On top of that, if the Iron Bundle chooses to go for a Protect that first turn and, you know, help try to hit, like get a partner to help it out, you actually do pack the Encore, which allows you to lock the Iron Bundle into that Protect, sort of turning around one of Iron Bundle's best sets on itself, which is really cool. And of course, you have that Tailwind and Sleep Powder to threaten things. Sleep Powder, obviously, you know, being a very wishy-washy move at 75 base speed. But going into, like, everything that's super common in the metagame, let's just go ahead and throw up in Peakalytics real quick uh, to see, like, what's common in the format, at least on Showdown. You know, you're going to outspeed Fluttermane, you can put it to sleep. 
Chi Yu goes to sleep. Amoongus is actually like, it, it won't go to sleep and you don't hit it very hard, but being able to encore it into like a spore while you have like a safety goggles mod on the field is very useful. And you also ignore the rage powder from that. So that's very nice. Ting Lu, I would argue, is one of the things that uh, we'll be able to not hard check, but deal with Flutter, not Flutter Man. I, I keep mixing up my Pokemon today. Deal with Jumpluff in a way that is pretty effective. And of course, Chen Pao, I would argue, is like one of the best answers to it. But one of the things that makes Fluttermane even more useful is how well it matches into Palafin specifically. So, you will I keep saying Fluttermane. Jumpluff. All right, so what makes Jumpluff so good is how well it matches into Palafin. Uh, so, like I said, you're actually outspeeding Iron Bundle by quite a bit, so you don't, you don't even have to invest max speed. Let's actually do the math really quick. Let me pull up a calculator and just see like how much speed you actually need to outspeed Iron Bundle at plus one. So Iron Bundle hits that 309 base speed. That means Jump Pluff just needs to hit um, 310 at plus two. So, you know, 310 divided by two is going to go ahead and be 155. Jump Pluff could even run like a bold nature at that point, I think. Yeah, and then you just hit like that 155. You can max out your HP and then just really crank that defense stat. I don't know. Something like that. I, I guess bold might not be the best for this, but you, you see my point. Like you can invest quite a bit into that defense stat and make yourself really bulky. Um, and because you're in the sun, you're actually taking half damage from those water moves. So even a wave crash into this thing isn't going to do that much. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and calc that. So let's go ahead and pull up Jump Pluff, Tailwind Support Set, just 252 HP. Let's go ahead and give it four defense. It'll be a little bit more um, charitable to it. We'll open up the Palafin Mystic Water Haze Set, and we'll go ahead and give it Grasta Water. You can see that Wave Crash isn't Okoing even without the Sun up, but Sun is usually going to be up for this thing, so you're actually doing less than half, at which point you can go ahead and toss a Leaf Storm its way. And Leaf Storm does like 50% to it, which, you know, mind you, the Iron Bundle, you're one-shotting it. And I, I'm actually really curious about that Great Tusk damage. Yeah, Great Tusk, you're doing 79 to 94% to it, so it's a very good Pokemon. But yeah, uh, Jump Pluff is able to run other sets. I think this is probably one of the best sets, but it does have access to other really cool moves. Let's say you don't want to have to bother with the Sleep Powder shenanigans. You can actually go ahead and run Rage Powder for uh, redirecting moves or even Pollen Puff to heal your partner. Helping Hand, which is also a really powerful move. And if you want to get really crazy, Strength Sap can actually make this thing very annoying and last very long. A lot of the best Pokemon in the format are physical attackers that... Um, won't hit jump bluff very hard anyways and being super fast and being able to lower the attack stat on a great tusk uh and get all your health back is really nice being able to lower the attack stat on the likes of chen pao on the likes of palafin especially iron hands uh don dozo wouldn't appreciate getting its attack stat lowered and just healing all of your health like yeah obviously you have to be careful for like defined pokemon like annihilate or uh king gambit but my point stands it's a very nice move to have on it so yeah Jump Pluff basically just enables the team to do whatever it wants. If we look at this, uh, we see, you know, in the sun, or at least this specific setup. I don't know if Joe ran a Jack Pack uh, because the details aren't quite out yet. I could ask him, I guess, but, you know, I, I just sat down to record this. So uh, you can, like, lead off with, like, Torkoal and, like, Jump Pluff, and then you can eject Pack, overheat yourself out, uh, and then you get in, you know, Tailwind plus Great Tusk or Chen Pao. You have the option to like you know chen pao will force a lot of things to want to go for protect if they want to protect on you jump of all the sun gets to encore it's obviously covert cloak which means that it's not gonna be able to be faked out it's a very reliable pokemon and you know a decently bulky one anyways yeah that's enough about me gushing about how cool this team is i think it's really solid uh i'll go ahead and i'll try it out in a in a stream tomorrow uh but yeah so jump love very good team joe very talented player now let's take a look at like the usage of the pokemon around it to get a little preview as to what we can expect at Portland. It's mostly going to be balance, sun offense, and some outliers. Uh, what you'll notice is when I say outliers, I mean like you could say that Andrew Jenkins is top 16 team here with Farigraph, uh, Fluttermane, Corviknight, Ting Lu, Iron Bundle, and Arcanine is a balanced team, but it isn't like a traditional balanced team in what we see uh, in the format. It's not Pala balance. It's not that Arcanine Amoongus Palafin core with strong stuff around it. It's just like a very bulky team that has the same tools as a balance team, uh, but relies more on, uh, what is it called? Like um, unorthodox Pokemon. So, you know, I, I don't know how well I can break down Andrew Jenkins' team, but I do think that's really interesting seeing the Ting Lu plus Farigraph. And honestly, Ting Lu plus a bunch of special attackers is just like a really interesting combo considering the anti-synergy they have there. But getting to top 16 means that it wasn't really that much of an issue. 
Uh, and I guess Tinglu next to Corviknight is also like really nice. I'd imagine the Corviknight does have some form of Tailwind or something. But yeah. Uh, another thing to note is we do see the Sun Chi Yu team with uh, a bunch of strong special attackers. So Chi Yu Sun is a thing that we actually saw come back uh, at the beginning of the format. I think one of the most notable people to run it was actually Jody, uh, who ran a really interesting Murkrow plus um, Chi Yu team. So basically, Chi Yu was able to spam overheats next to the Murkrow, and Murkrow could haze away the uh, special attack drops. Similar to how Golden Go used to be ran next to Murkrow, uh, it's always able to, if I could spell right, it's always able to go for like Make It Rains uh, under Tailwind. And then like rather than the Murkrow, you know, being useless on the field, uh, it can actually haze away the special attack drops from the Golden Go. Even though it has make or even though it has good as gold, uh, haze actually bypasses that because it's more of a field thing than a targeted move. So yeah. Obviously, Murkrow Sun has been like a really reliable core uh, next to Great Tusk. It's very powerful. And Murkrow being able to run like a pretty standard set of like Haze, Tailwind, Foul Play, and Sunny Day is really nice because a lot of Sun teams rely on Manual Sun from Torkoal. And I think that with Chi Yu on the team, you don't want to do that, but you also really need Chi Yu to make the team super threatening. So by running like this new version of Sun where you have access to Manual Sun is actually like making the archetype a lot more reliable. We also see that uh, Adrian Hurley did run a Don Dozo Tatsugiri team that used Sand and Ndidi Armourage. I, you know, I don't really have anything else to say about this team other than, you know, we saw this running around in Series 1 and it's really cool how the exact same team can be used in, in Regulation C, uh, despite the fact that Ting Lu and all the ruins should hypothetically, like, just annihilate Ndidi Armourage, but it, it's, it's whatever, you know. Uh, we see some Pala Balance from Jorge, we see some Pala Balance from Robbie. Uh, we see Chen Pal Balance, which is a new form of, not new, but like it's a form of Pal Balance that's been picking up a little bit. I think that, you know, the, the four standard mons on Pal Balance being, you know, Fluttermane, Palafin, Amoongus, and Arcanine, like those are all really cool Pokemon. You could sort of build it like a Dondozo team, in my opinion, where it's like a solid four and then you have like an alternate opener. Um, Chen Pao plus Dragonite is obviously a really strong lead in this metagame because of the fact that Chen Pao will usually run the Terra Ghost uh, and lower the defense stats of everything, while a Choice Band, Life Orb, Lumberry, Assault Vest, whatever item on Dragonite will be able to take advantage of those things, run Inner Focus, not get intimidated, and just deal massive damage with a Terra Blast Flying, Terra Normal Extreme Speed, or whatever tool it has at its disposal. We see more Pala Balance. Pala Balance is really like the, I would say it's the chalk of this gen, even though chalk wasn't like, I, I don't know. I think I don't think it's as dominant as Chalk, but I think it's like the, the team that you just see and you like know what it's going to do. And it's like setting the standard for everything to beat. We see more Sun offense. Um, interestingly enough, this one has a Talonflame over the Murkrow. Uh, and I think that's a, a really interesting call. I would imagine the Talonflame probably has Sunny Day or something on it. And even if it doesn't, it actually, actually, no, Talonflame doesn't really need Sunny Day, to be honest, uh, to be useful. Murkrow kind of just uses it like a filler move. See Joseph's team, which we already talked about. Uh, we have some more Sun Offense. Uh, not Pala Balance, but something that people have been doing is if they find that their team needs an, intimid an Intimidator and they already have like a Chi Yu on it, typically you'll actually go ahead and drop Palafin for Gyarados because Gyarados fills a very similar niche in being a physically attacking water type that's quite bulky, but having access to that Intimidate uh, as well as tools like Taunt and Thunder Wave, sort of takes like that water type role that's the physically offensive water type role that Palafin has um, and just keeps it as like a physically offensive water type, but more of like a support thing. It's not meant to pick up KOs as easily as Palafin does, although they will sometimes run um, Dragon Dance. And I'd imagine with an Amoongus on the team, Dragon Dance is probably there. So yeah, uh, we see more hyper offense stuff. Um, Talonflame plus Fluttermane, Amoongus, Chi, not Chi Yu, Chen Pao and Iron Hands. I don't really have much to say about that. Pala Balance, Pala Balance with, uh, honestly, this one's interesting. Usually when you see um, Annihilate on a team, it either has a Mouse Hold or a Ting Lu next to it because of the synergy that it has. Seeing an Annihilate on this team with just a Moongus is a little confusing to me. I'm actually not sure how that's built, but I'd be really curious to ask the guy how like how often the Annihilate came to games because of that. Because I feel like Annihilate's a little bit of a sitting duck without the support. Alberto went ahead and ran just sort of like a balanced team again. Uh, once again, we see like the Chi Yu making it so you, you know, you still want an Intimidator, so you end up dropping it for Gyarados. Uh, or you drop like the Arcanine for Gyarados or the Palafin. And then we just see more Pal, Pal Balance from uh, Francisco. Yeah, 
Um, my thoughts on this is that like Halibounce is going to be like the strongest archetype that we see going forward. But I think that Sun winning the entire thing and having like th that positive matchup into Palabounce makes it so that we might see more not all right so like sun offense with murkrow was like a thing that we knew about but sun offense with jump Pluff, having a more positive matchup into pal bounce is sort of a metagame shaker that i think people have to consider going into portland and i know that it has it has actually like messed with my portland prep where i'm i'm reconsidering my team so yeah uh i'm gonna figure out what i'm gonna do but uh this is basically just me quick little video talking about this tournament how it's gonna shape up uh the metagame going forward and yeah uh just a nice little overview nothing too in-depth if you guys enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.